Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are continuing on with our dress space station build. So this is part two and today we're building the very top part or what we perceive to be the top part of the space station itself. Um, the design here was centered around two things. So one is electricity. We needed some form of electricity generator things. So we have quite a few solar panels here. I have actually added a few more at a later point, but I wanted to make it look really cool looking. Sometimes you'll, you'll notice like the IIS, um, the, you know, the space station solar panels are kind of aligned in a normal way, but I wanted this to be kind of unique. So you'll see at a later point, Although, obviously, this wouldn't be as efficient, that's just the way it is. I mean, you've got to sacrifice efficiency for looks sometimes, and that's what we've done. Furthermore, the next part of the space station here was to also build some form of communication array of some sort, and also maybe a, uh, I guess, a control area for the space station itself. So I guess it would look like you know, where the space station would be controlled from. So I've kind of, I decided to use like the rover part for that. I thought it looked pretty good and it seems to work best. That, that rover part there though, the problem is that the only other part that really aligns well with it on the back end is well, another one of those rover parts. You kind of flip it and aligns well. Aside from that, nothing else really fits nicely onto it, but I guess that's, maybe that would be resolved in the future. So the design is mostly built. At this point, we are now making the actual launcher. And this was, I guess, surprisingly easy, but I, I guess, you know, enough failures kind of teach you a lesson or two. And I'm not fast forwarding here. You actually see what my frames are like. A little bit slow, but yeah, well, most of the video I've just time warped so that you guys won't have to suffer through all that. But here and there, I, I do actually leave you know, the, the actual, the same speed as it is when I play, just so you get a feel for um, how the game is progressing. And, you know, whenever there's new updates here and there, I'll, I'll do the same just so everyone can see how it is. Now, I didn't really have the luxury of doing an efficient launch here. I was pretty much just straight up. That was, that was all I could do because, again, aerodynamics isn't really a thing here. I mean, you can have some type of cover for the payload, but... It, it wouldn't actually protect anything inside. So anyway, the, the, the launch was pretty smooth, I guess, because we we're going straight up. So that was nice. And here is a shot where we have just decoupled the initial stages. So at this point, all we have is just the, the nuclear engine and we are heading over to dress. So we just did a typical maneuver and I also adjusted our angle and boom. Here we are, teleported. Now we're here. It took a while. Uh, there was one issue with the actual maneuver before where I think the way in which we were turning or rotating around Dres was the wrong way around. So we had to kind of flip. So at this point, we are now trying to rendezvous with the initial core stage that we set up in the last episode. And that is just, you know, your typical docking. So I haven't actually docked to anything in, I guess, seven years. So this was, I was, I thought that maybe I would fail, but looks like I still got it. I mean, it's fairly simplistic if you use the maneuver nodes, of course. Uh, one thing though around docking is always make sure you have some extra monitor propellant because you do not want to run out of that. That's very, very painful. Uh, at least in this case, I had so much monitor propellant that I didn't know what to do with it. And here we are, this is where we are pretty close to the next stage of the, well, the core is pretty much right in front as you can see. And I'm time, time warping a little, but when I actually stopped time warping, you would notice that the core is actually spinning relatively fast. That was a little bit concerning because I was like, why, why is it spinning? I'm pretty sure I didn't let it spin when I left it last time, but uh, now you might be wondering what just happened there. There was a little bug where when you decouple or when you undock, the space station was literally just being destroyed somehow. So I tried time warping and then undocking, but that also had an issue. But I don't know, after a while, it just seemed to work at like normal. And this is where we are docking the two 
I guess the top and the core together. Now, I'm not time warping this or fast forwarding here. This is pretty much pure in-game performance. And it's very, very frightening because you hear like this window sound and then you hear an explosion. And I'm like, oh, did something break? What's going on? But no, thankfully it worked and it worked pretty darn well. So happy days. I was worried when the docking wasn't, uh, well, undocking wasn't working very well because I thought like, well, that this is probably like a very short series, like <laughs> one episode gone. But it worked out, worked out in the end. I think the the latest patch resolved the docking issues, or well, partially. So <laughs> thank you devs for that. Now, the next stage here is to essentially uh, go and position ourselves within the planetary ring. So we can have a nice view. Of course, you know, the law for this thing is that, you know, technically Kerbals are... I guess fleeing Kerbin and they need a new home so they've decided to build around the planetary ring because I guess it's easier to just farm resources you could just say hey there's ice there there's iron here let's just go direct right instead of having to just mine like a lot to or dig to get into things it's a lot easier for asteroids so I think someone was saying asteroids tend to be the core of planets. Although I'm not so sure about planetary rings. I, I assume there's something to that effect. And um, as you can see here, we are in position. It looks fantastic, I think. Now the actual, I think they're called trusses at the very front or on the, on the right here. Those things just glisten in the light. It looks really, really nice. I, I actually recommend anyone to use that particular part, especially if it's silver. It, when it just shines like that, it's, uh, yeah, it's just nice to see. And as you can see here, the solar panel placement from before, it just looks cool, especially on a front view. Yeah, it's uh, very advanced looking. And as you can see here, we're just traveling along the ring, trying to just embrace the view. And this is the front part of our space station. Um, I like the way it looks. I don't know, it reminds me of a bit of a freaky alien looking butterfly but <laughs> and you can see here i guess uh whatever you call it uh, the asteroids and stuff within the the planetary ring are just zooming past it's totally safe and you would totally do this in real life i mean i wonder how fast some asteroids and stuff are moving within a ring as in i'm sure some are kind of moving left and right and up and down and maybe at some point one would get bumped and hit your space station and Bye bye. So I'm not so sure or how safe it would be. Maybe I'll look into that at some point. So or let me know if you if you have any thoughts around that. So anyway, for the week 11 or so, I think it was week 12 challenge on the KSP forums, which I think only one person or so has tried. We are going to land on dress because we just happen to have, I guess, leftover fuel in a, in a rocket stage, which we don't need. And I decided just to try and land within something that looked like a canyon. And it was pretty easy to be honest because you know Dress has a relatively low gravity. It does remind me of Minmus, you know, because yeah, it's super easy. And uh, do keep in mind that this stage was not intended to land on Dress, hence the reason why it is now falling. Yeah, no, this was just we've literally repurposed this, right? And I'm surprised because this was incredibly useful. This stage got us from Kerbin to Dress to, to dock around the core of our space station to then move us around, well, to be within that planetary ring and then land it on Dress. I mean, this thing has been everywhere. Incredibly useful. So much fuel. And I had too much RCS. So I ended up just using RCS um, as fuel and just to move us around. <laughs> so, yeah, if you ever have a lot of RCS, that's something you can do. And uh, yeah, you will notice here that we happen to be um, underground, underdressed now somehow. I created a very shallow orbit and somehow we just decided to dig there. So I don't know. Underground, I guess that's a challenge in itself. But I was going to try and save this and return back to Kerbin, but I guess that's not going to happen now. <laughs> I was like, at this point I was just trying to get out of underground, but no, that didn't work. So that's a fail, but we tried. Uh, that's, I guess that's partly complaining that 
weekly challenge. So, yeah, um, overall, I'm happy with the build. Let me know your thoughts. Next episode, we'll build more. Um, but that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.